Hi, welcome back. Um, today I'd like to tie a peacock caddis. Um, this has probably been my most productive fly uh, for the past two years. I have more fish on this than anything else. And the great thing about it is it's easy to tie and there's not hardly any materials in it. And that is it there. It's, uh, there's hardly anything to it. So here we go, we've got the size 14 uh, black hook in the vice. Um, it's by, this one's by Royd Lewis. Uh, it's, a, it's a wet hook this, but it's light enough for, the, uh, for this flight to float. Quite easily actually. And you don't need any uh, floating on it either, whether it being deer hair, whether it being hollow. So we'll just take the thread to the back, or to the start of the bend, I should say. Uh, you want a black, single strand of black peacock hurl. Uh, it looks actually green still on there. It's got a bronzy tinge to it as well. Uh, you never really get the a true black colour, you'll always get that green and brown coming through. So I'll just catch that in the full length of the body. Like that. And a tiny bit of super glue. This will just strengthen the hurl. Stop it coming apart as soon as the first fish hits it. If I can get it to come out. There we go. So, so you don't want loads on because it'll just soak into the hole and ruin it. Okay, so I'll just wind that around. Give it sort of touch and turns it all the way up. Okay, you want about two thirds of the hook of the uh, the body of the hook and then just come back a few turns. I found this one when I was searching the internet for popular flies. And it was a guy in America who said it was it had been his favourite and most productive fly for the past 35 years. So I thought I'd give it a try and I'm pleased I did. Like I say, this catches when everybody else is blanking. Even when there's nothing rising on the surface, they'll still come up for it. Okay. Now, deer hair, you just want a normal, natural deer hair like this one. Get that in focus. Just a natural colour. I think this is a Vineyards product. Uh, it's quite good, I mean you get loads on it, you get hundreds of flies out of this one piece. Okay, so I'll take a piece off that. You want a piece about, about the thickness of one of these. You all know what that is. A little clip for drying your flies out on. Okay, so I'll just clip a bit of that off. Take the bits at the end, some fuzzies. Pop it in the stacker. Just give it a stack. When you take it out, always take it out the way you're going to handle it. Like that. So you want the points going towards the back. And just pull it out makes it much easier swapping hands. If you do it the opposite way around, by the time you turn it round you lose all, lose it all over your bench. Okay, so the length of this doesn't want to be any longer than the full length of the hook. The tips want to be just at the edge of that at the bend there. So you're only using the very tips of it. So just catch that in. A couple of loose wraps and then tighten up. Take it down, 
fold it back a couple of wraps in front and then while you've still got hold of the ends snip it off close the same way you would do with a uh, an uh, caddis or something similar but you want it close so you can tie those ends in and then what I do is just keep hold of these pits so they don't go all the way around the hook and just tie that down like that now you can fish this just like that and it will work probably just as well but what I've found is that if you put a little hackle on the front there is a, a little brown or a grizzly or something like that just gives it a bit of variation but today I'm going to use a bit of ostrich hull it's not a product that you see very often used there now it is I love it I think it gives a great movement in the water let me just catch that in like that and three or four turns two turns over the back two turns at the front to lock it in it's broken away that's handy right and then we'll just give that a quick half hitch and another one like that trim the thread and put a bit of UV resin. Oops. That's my scissors gone. I have to buy some new ones now. I'll oh, please the wife. Set it with your torch. And that is it. Now, there's other variations you can do. Like this one. This one has got a purple body. It's just a bit of purple dubbing. I don't even know what kind of dubbing it is, to be honest. I don't know whether you can see that. Oh, there you go. We can do them in orange, green peacock. Uh, I find the black ones work best. Probably, probably because of my local water. Um, we got a lot of black flies on there. We should give it a try. It's an excellent fly. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here's that fly in a glass of water. You can see the way it just sits there. If I just get a shot of it through the centre get it to focus that's better now you see the way the body sits under the surface and the wing is above see where it's just above if you find where it's that hook that little heavier little heavier hook that's making it sink like that if you find that it is sinking all together you can just put a little bit of floating on the top of the wing but don't do too much because I think, the, I think the beauty of this is the way that it does sit under the surface and you can always give it a little tug if you want to sink it if there's trout cruising around in the area they're not taking your fly but I fish these in a dead calm if you can find a piece, on your, piece of water on your lake that's got no wind on it uh, well, most people stay away from that, because usually everybody likes a ripple. But I prefer it flat so you can fish them like this. Really still. Don't move it at all, just let the wind move it. Okay, so I hope that helps. See you later.